Hello there, calculus kids. This is Mr. Bean, and today's lesson we're going to do some special derivative rules dealing with cosine, sine, and exponential and logarithmic functions. And really, this is actually pretty easy. It's just a little bit of memorization, and you remember those rules for everything we do for the rest of this year dealing with these functions. So the first off is derivative of cosine. Now, this is just something you have to memorize. The derivative of cosine is negative sine x. That's it. We could prove it and go through all this work, but we're not going to have to do that in this lesson. We're just going to tell you the rule and you memorize it. Okay? So the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. The derivative of sine is cosine x, but it's positive. Okay? So the derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. Sure would be nice if it was just sine, but it's not. It's negative sine. So how do we take the derivative of this function, this example here? We take 2 down, and then the derivative of sine is cosine x. Oh, I should probably say that f prime of x equals, so you know what we're doing here, 2 cosine x minus 5. And now we take the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine x. And then we could simplify this up, and so we get that the derivative of x, f prime, is equal to 2 cosine x plus, because of the minus and the negative, 5 sine x. And that's it. Now, before we go on to logarithm and exponential stuff, I need to remind you of a few simple things. The natural log of 1 is equal to 0. The natural log of 0 is undefined. So now, if you have a hard time remembering which is which, just remember what the graph looks like. So if we have an xy axis, the graph is doing this. That's a logarithm graph where you have a vertical asymptote right here at x equals 0. That's a vertical asymptote. So it's never going to actually get to it. And so you can't have an x be 0, so it's undefined there. All right, e to the 0, anything to the 0, well, any non-zero base to the 0 would be the number 1. And then here you have the natural number e raised to the natural log. When you have the natural numbers combined like that, those just cancel out and you get a. And then here, same thing. The natural log of the natural number means that those things just cancel out and you get a. All right, that's important to remember these things as we progress through what we're about to practice. First up, the derivative of any number being raised to the x is that same thing times the natural log of that number. Okay, so if I had 5 to the x, it would be 5 to the x natural log of 5. Okay, so the a just represents any number that we want. Now over here, this is a little different. We have e, the natural number e to the x. So when you have that, it follows the same pattern where you take the base and it's raised to the x. So e raised to the x times the natural log of e. But the natural log of e, as we just discussed, is the number 1. That just cancels out and becomes a 1 because the exponent's a 1. Therefore, that just equals e to the x. So if you see e to the x as the derivative, the answer is just e to the x. It's so awesome because it's really easy. It's just itself. That's its derivative. But if you have any other base other than an e, you have to include this natural log of a. So let's try on a quick little example here. So if we have 2 raised to the x, that is 2. Oops, I forget the f prime again. f prime of x equals 2 raised to the x natural log of the base, which is 2 plus, and then I do this one, which is just going to be 3e raised to the x. It doesn't change. The derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. So that's it for this one. Now let's do some logarithm functions. If you have log base something, so a represents any number we want, log base a, that is going to give us as a derivative 1 over x times 1 over the natural log of that number. This is at first going to seem confusing, but you'll do so many of these throughout the year that it'll become very simple for you. All right, so then uh, if we have the natural log of x, remember that the natural log of x is actually equivalent to log base e of x. That's what natural log is. It's base e. Therefore, what does this become? It becomes 1 over x, just like this one was, with a 1 over the natural log of the base, which is natural log of e. And then what does that equal? Well, natural log of e is 1, so that all simplifies to just 1 over x. This log base a becomes 1 over x, 1 over natural log of a. And then if you have the natural log of x, it's really simple. It just jumps all the way to 1 over x. But if you forget that, you can just always apply this rule to it, and it will work out every time as you simplify. So let's try out another quick example of this. So we have the derivative is going to equal. So we have a logarithm, so it's going to be 1 over x 
times 1 over the natural log of the base, which in this case is 4, minus, and now we have 4 times, the, what's the derivative of the natural log of x? That one's just 1 over x. And then we could clean this up a little bit, simplify our answer. So the derivative will be 1 over x natural log of 4 minus 4 over x. And you'll probably be able to see how to just do that one step without having to write it out, but I'm writing it out in this video just so you can see exactly how I get there. Okay, let's do a few more examples and then we're all finished up with this. So we're just finding the derivative. So the derivative here is going to be 2 sine goes to cosine. Remember, and it stays positive, so sine goes to cosine, plus, and this one is 5 times the derivative of e to the x is just itself, e to the x, and we're done. That was so quick and easy. I love it. Next one, the derivative of this one is 3 to the x. It stays itself, but then you, because it's not a base e, you have to tag on the natural log of the base. In this case, it's 3. Minus 4, and now the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. So now we can clean this up just a little bit, and it becomes that the derivative equals 3 to the x, natural log of 3, and then this is plus, because of the minus and the negative, plus 4 sine x. Uh, last one here is the derivative is going to equal, all right, so now we have a logarithm, so it becomes 1 over x times 1 over the natural log of the base. In this case, that's a 2 minus, and then the derivative of sine is just cosine. And then let's just clean that up a little bit, simplify it, and that's going to be 1 over x natural log of 2 minus cosine x. All right, now let's take the derivative and plug in a number. All right, we've been doing this already for a few lessons, so we'll take the derivative of f. So f prime of x is going to equal, uh, this is 3 times 1 over x plus e to the x. Derivative of e to the x is just itself. So now we'll go ahead and plug in the number 5, and we get, this is a 5 down here, so that's going to be 3 fifths plus e to the fifth. And then that's it. That's the answer. There's nothing else that you can do to simplify that because this is an irrational number, e to the fifth. So that's the answer. That's the number 3 fifths plus e to the fifth. All right, last example. So the derivative is going to be 3 times negative sine, cosine's derivative is negative, plus, now this is like you have a 1 half in front, remember that? The dividing by 2 just means you have a 1 half. So it's 1 half times the derivative of sine, which is cosine x. All right, now let's plug in the pi. So we get f prime of pi equals, I'm going to bring the negative out, so I'll make it negative 3 sine of pi plus one half cosine of pi and then you just have to remember your trig stuff so f prime of pi is equal to sine of pi is zero remember on the unit circle you're over here for pi and that coordinate point is negative one comma zero so sine of pi is always the y value sine is zero so that's negative three times zero plus one half times cosine of pi is negative 1. And so then the answer is negative 1 half. That cancels and 1 half times negative 1. Okay, there we go. So that's the end of our lesson, but let's just quickly, quickly review. This is the main point of this whole lesson, the summary here. So what's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Now, later on, we're going to talk about more trig stuff, and you just have to remember that if it starts with the C, your answer is going to be negative. You don't have to remember that right now as much, but it will come in handy with other things we'll do. If it starts with a C, the derivative is always going to be negative. And then the derivative of sine is cosine x. The derivative of e to the x is just itself, e to the x. The derivative of natural log of x is just 1 over x. Okay, these are the main ones for today. These are the ones you're going to see a ton throughout this year. The ones down here I've tagged on because once in a while you'll see them in some calculus problems, but you won't see them nearly as much as the natural log numbers. So just as a reminder, you still do its itself, but then you have to times it by the natural log of the base. And then same here, you get 1 over, and I could just put this all together, 1 over x times the natural log of the base a. So it's 1 over all of that. 
All right, these last two are not as common, but you will see them once in a while. These are extremely important though up here. All right, that's everything. So rock that master check and I'll see you back in the next lesson.